Hey everyone, Mike here from Kellerman Point Farm. So maybe that's a better intro than I've been doing, so I'm going to start doing that. I don't know what you guys think. So, 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 so I've been saying that a lot, and I told you I was going to work on that. And I am. So, oh, see, there, um, I'm trying not to do this, but like I said, we're new. I have something planned for today, uh, a couple random things. But the first, if you saw that little opening, if anybody knows what that is, guess what? We're going to check the bees. I'm going to put this on real quick, so be patient. <laughs> be patient. Well, first, I want to thank everybody for joining me on this beautiful day. <laughs> uh, this bee suit came with the farm. Um, they had bees before. And those bees were all dead. There was robber bees. The robber bees stole all the uh, honey. My brother-in-law and I opened the hive and we noticed that it was all fermented. Uh, it smelled like beer. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't taste anything. And robber bees came in and they stole all the old honey. And we had to start new. I got these from my friend down the road. I actually traded him use of two goats to eat down his vegetation. Uh, he hooked me up with a nook of bees. I got the nook from him and... Sorry, I was just checking the bees there. Um, I'll flip this around and get this kind of going. So we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Oh, um, yeah, I had to buy the frames and stuff like that from a company. But in the, after that, I noticed, well, got involved with some bee people, and we go to the Amish now, and it's half the price. So we buy frames, and we buy honey supers and all that from him. And he makes it in his shop, and they're really good quality. So why not go to him? All right, here we go. I just put my gloves on, and my phone worked with these gloves on. It's crazy. So it smells like an old tent in this bee suit. Anybody ever go camping and have your tent stored and you have that like certain smell? Yeah, that's what this smells like. All right, so these are Ohio Survivor bees. I don't know if you could tell them going in. Yeah, they're going in right there. They're pretty chill. Um, oh. They were originally founded through the Ohio State University. And... Somehow AJ got a hold of them, so now I have them. You guys are doing a beautiful job. Should we take a peep? Where did I put my two? Right there. That's an old pollen patty. I'm going to scrape that out. They don't need it. Uh-oh, beetles. i got to put some beetle traps in here. Oh, you guys got this in here good. There we go. Oh, you guys are going to be mad at me. Here, I'm going to put you right here for now. Just hang on. And they're working on their honeycomb. So this is the first honey super that I put on. And that's on top of the brood box. So I'm going to take a look at the brood box. There you go, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry. Okay, all right. Sorry, jeez. Why are you trying to sting me? I just said you guys were chill. So sorry. I'll get the smoker. All right, fine. I'll get the smoker. You're not going to be happy with that. This dude is trying to get in. Don't sting me because you're going to die. Alright. Bees are new to me. Um, you know. Kind of roll with the punches. Let's see what we got down here. Alright. I'm going to pause this. Put you down for a minute. Can I pause it? Yeah. Kind of hard to do with the phone and open everything, but everything looks okay. Um, I really upset them this time. Normally they're pretty chill, and 
I could open it without a suit on, but I'm glad I wore it today because I had a couple trying to get it at my face. Uh, I think I'll do beehive stuff more in depth later uh, when I get like a tripod and all that kind of stuff so I could set it up and you can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, the bees were super angry and I didn't bring my smoker. I didn't feel like walking all the way back and back and back. They looked to be fine. Um, I just didn't want to hold my phone and do all that at the same time. It's not dangerous. I just don't want to harm the bees. And Plus, I'm a little lazy, and it's hot, and we're in the valley, so everything's damp and muggy. I'm sweating already. I didn't feel like walking back and forth. Maybe next time I'll show you the inside of the beehive, uh, a closer look, and show you the frames and all that kind of stuff. I got to be a little bit more prepared for that kind of stuff and showing you guys. But what I can show you is what I'm doing here. So this is a honey super. Uh, a, it's a deep frame. I'm new to the honey game and I'm learning the terminology and all that stuff still. But it's a honey super and that goes on top. Um, I, if you look at a beehive, usually the bottom one's the um, brood box and brood, meaning where they make all the babies and eggs and that's where the queen is and happy, happy, happy. Open that up, and they all flew out and got mad at me. I didn't bring my smoker. Um, next time. So what I think I'm going to do today and right now is this brood box. I am going to seal it against the weather. I don't need to put it on just yet because the honey super that I just put on, I don't know, two weeks ago, I, it looked like there was three or four frames that were not 100% completely uh, full of honeycomb. Uh, they it just the comb, the wax is on there. There's no honey yet, so I got some time, but I got time today, so I'm just gonna seal it. But what I do, uh, this the honey super looks like you know it's just a box. You can see there's these grooves here, and that's where the frames sit. And what the frame is, is one of these guys. It's kind of fancy. Um, the bees come here, they start building the honeycomb. I don't know if you could see, probably not. If you're interested and you already know what this is, then I don't have to show you. But this sits in those grooves inside the Honey Super. Um, this is a 10 frame. Uh, I have five built already. Just pop it in there. Uh, I, I like to put some beeswax first. That seems to help those guys out. But when I got them, I got them already assembled from um, the Amish. The place I went to before, they sent it to me and it was all disassembled and I had to assemble it. And the amount that I paid for it was twice as much that I got it from the Amish guy that was already assembled. Uh, yeah. So, from the Amish guy, here's the assembled frame. There's two brads in either end. And there's two brads on the bottom. Very well constructed. And the backing. You can either get black or white. I like to get black because I was told that it's easier to see eggs and queens and all that cells and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I'm new to this. I don't have a lot of experience because I'm new. We are just kind of rolling with the punches and just doing. Sometimes I feel like just doing stuff. Um, you know, you do your research, you see what's what, uh, I'm not the type of person to overly research and overly question. Sometimes I just do, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, luckily I have two good resources of people. My brother-in-law, he, he went to classes and, you know, it seems like he knows what he's doing and he does a great job with his hives. I also have the guy down the road that I got the bees from, the, the nook. And he texts me, he's like, hey, check this, hey, do that. Um, when he's going to do the oxalic acid, he's going to come over and help me with that because I've never done it. Um, seems easy, but I'd rather see it done first in person and have him check up on the hive to see if it's healthy. Makes sense, right? So what I'm going to do is just, I don't even know why I'm building this. I got to take these out anyway just to seal it. So, yeah. I'm going to pause this. Seal this up, and I'll see you in a couple. Eh, Captain Nate, if you're watching this, 
I'm stealing some. But I'm going to see if you notice first. What's the buzz about the bees? Um, save the bees. Pollination. Uh, you hear a lot about it. The bees are dying. Yeah, unfortunately that's true. Um, I think with today's farming practices... Uh, oh, hey look, a chair. This tiny little kid's chair. I'm going to see if it holds my weight. So today's farming practices with big agriculture... Um, it seems like they are using a lot of chemicals for pest control. I'm pretty sure that's kind of a mainstream knowledge now. Um, and unfortunately with the pesticides that large agriculture uses, the pesticide is indeterminate for aphids, um, slugs, and bumblebees or honeybees that's a sad state of affairs when everything's getting sprayed and killing all the bugs um, the bees pollinate obviously everybody knows everything about bees I'm not here to instruct about bees because I don't know everything about bees but here on our farm like I said we don't spray we don't use chemicals uh, our grass gets a little long and there's little flowers on it and the bees go out there and pollinate it and it's good for everything. When I was, when I first bought my house, um, I thought dandelions were bad. So I used to spray for dandelions. I used to fertilize for dandelions and make sure my lawn was green. I now know that the dandelion is the bees first meal after winter because the dandelion is the first flower that pops up in the yards and the bees know to go to those well if you spray for dandelions there's no food for the bees bees die right makes sense i think if we as a people understand that more we could do little things like not using yard fertilizers and weed killers and we could help save the bee population. Just something simple. I don't know where... It's probably like the big uh, fertilizer companies that say dandelions are not good. But here on our farm, we use dandelions for all sorts of things. Not only is it bee food, but we use it as people food. Uh, greens, you could use that in a salad. Melissa makes um, dandelion jelly, which is really good. It tastes kind of like honey, which is funny. And we have the boys go out and pick the first dandelions out in the fields. Obviously, we don't pick every one of them. Uh, we save some for the bees, but, you know, we take what we need. And we make stuff with it. And during times of hunger in this country, during the Great Depression, people used to make lots of things with dandelions. They used to make soup and stews with the roots, salads with the leaves. People still enjoy it. I've seen dandelion wine, which is sugar, wine, and sweet and good if you like that sort of thing but um yeah i think we have a very big uh i don't know i don't know what you want to say but i think we have a big issue with dandelions in this country and that's if we just adjusted ourselves a little bit and let the dandelions grow i think the bees will be better off also with being in suburban areas people do fertilize their lawn and get rid of clover Clover is a legume. Yeah, I learned that. And bees also use their flowers to pollinate. Well, when you're getting rid of it out of your yard, depending how big it is, that might be a big area for the bees to come in, pollinate, and do their thing. So keep that in mind. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not on a soapbox. I'm not on a hot horse. Do what you want. But um, as far as us, that's what we did, and we made a change. Uh, oh, you guys want to see the cows today? We're going to go down and see the cows. Um, my Amish friend, he has them. He's weaning them for us. And I'm going to ask him if it's okay if I take videos. If you don't see the cows, he said he probably wouldn't prefer it. But hopefully this next video is going to be of the cows. I'm going to try not to get my Amish friend, but these little cows are awesome. Uh, well, they're steer. Um, they're Holstein steer. We're getting two black and whites and two red and whites. 
So, yeah, uh, hopefully we could go down there and see them. And if we do, you're gonna about to see it. So, hang on. If not, then I'm gonna make this video short about bees. Sorry it wasn't more informational and I didn't get air in there and uh, show you the highs and the combs and all that stuff, but uh, maybe next time. I guess I'm just trying to produce videos and get them out there so you're used to seeing my face and hearing my voice. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll see you a little bit or have a good day and I'll see you next time. Yeah, you're short. There's the sheep. <laughs> Yep. Oh, there's our babies. Aww. And then there's our two little ones. Yeah. Hi. It's our baby. What's up? How are you? Oh, you're scared, huh? You're scared? So this one was chained up because it was nibbling on its brother. He looks curious. I bet if we had a feed bucket, he would come on over and say hello. Oh, yeah. This one's all in the pen by himself. Oh, you're friendly. You're friendly. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're friendly. You want to chomp. You want to chomp. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, you got me all slobbered. Okay, this one's cool. Yeah, it is. They're oh. both the same. They're, yeah, they're, they're the same. These are the red heifers. Uh -huh. Or, sorry, red Holsteins. They're both the same. <laughs> but look at the face. Look how he's got the red on either side and the white in the middle. Mm -hmm. But the one over here. They, they, the, the brownish red is cool. Isn't it? You want to see the big boys that we're getting? Yeah, I petted it. Oh, good. Let me see the other one. All right. Everybody's eating right now. Oh! What's up, big boys? How are you? Ah, yeah, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, well, we're going to get them both at the same time, I think. So, the these are the big ones in here. They're just a couple, they're, oh, they're a couple days older than the brown ones, or the red ones. So you guys are almost twins. So these are the ones that are castrated so far. I don't and dehorned. Oh yeah, that's a hi. Those are the horns. They they that they, that brown one right there. Mm -hmm. It's the one that they use for bucket. Oh yeah. Did you see him? This one's the friendly one. Uh, hey. What's your name? Calcuses. So what are the markings on yours, Liz? You're going to call him friendly? Yeah. Because he's friendly. Oh, yuck. He's friendly. Is it a boy? They're all boys. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Just the black ones. Are they castrated? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cow. The two over there look castrated. We like cows? Yeah, we like cows. Horses? Oh, we got to go slow. You can pet him. You just gotta. Yeah, I'll show you. Come here. I'll show you. Come here, little guy. You stick out your hand and you stay low.
we got to make friends with the animals so that way they come up to us. This one's like Stewie. So, like you turn around and he comes up to you, but then you turn over to look at him, he runs away. Yeah. Is that gonna be Chucky too? No. They're gonna call it friendly. You're gonna call that one friendly? Yeah. You're gonna call that one Fennel? I'm sorry, I'm not getting anything, honey. Fennel. What are we gonna call this one? That one's mommy's. That one's mommy's? Okay. You gotta tell me his name. Yeah. I, I named him Cow. I named him Cow. Come, oh, excuse me. Come here, Zeke. I know. Hi. I'm gonna name this one. Can you get a picture of me and my cow? Yep. You okay there, Steve? That's Zeke's cow. And we're calling him Sly because he has one black eye. Or Sylvester. Yeah. All right, we got names for him. That one's Sly. It's short for Sylvester because he's Sly with one black eye. My guy? is Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're going to call him Arnie. Uh-oh, hey, your friends are coming. 